Yo and everybody, we are here today checking out a demo for a possible upcoming banger by the name of Object Ward. Dot. This I actually just saw on Steam while I was browsing about looking for upcoming stuff and... The screenshots captivated me. It tripped me out, I was like, what the hell am I looking at? So I looked into the game, and it's a very dark game, mind you. This is gonna be definitely bordering on the lines of dark humor. So if that's okay with you, definitely check it out. If you're kind of sensitive about things, it might be a game that might be too dark for you. You might want to look away, is all I'm gonna say. But it's a very dark humor, dark comedy game. The primary focus, though, is our main character, who apparently everybody that he sees, he sees them with inanimate objects as their head. The human mind is a strange thing. A complex, three-pound organ that determines who we are before birth. Movement, thoughts, personality, mental disorders, even death, all caused by that gray mass in our noggin. It's so intricate. Scientists are still researching it today. Why do people act this way and not that way? Why does she believe she's a unicorn? Why does he cry so much? It's all a mystery. And I have one of the most puzzling ones. I never asked for this brain. But here we are. The life I was born into. Far beyond my control. And I'm not sure if it's just by happenstance, but her character is also apparently named... Manson. Hey! Hey! Why are your heads so weird? Hey, get away from me! Sir, put down the bat. No, I don't wanna. The aliens started it, didn't they? That's why you can't trust them. Sir, shut your pie hole, badge head. I want to be whacked around next. Oh, oh, is that a gun I see? Oh, I ain't scared. I'll be on TV. Oh, nah. How about a little mooning, huh? Ah! Oh, you shot me in the ass! I'll sue all of you! Hands off! I'm not into that kind of mood right now, or maybe a little bit. A man in a uniform, ow! <laughs> oh, just a little further down. Ow, ow! Ah, just get inside. Oh, great. You're getting blood all over the back seat. Cell? Ah! Uh, Y'all release me in a week anyway. Mr. Moss, I'm your defense attorney, hired by the state. Before we start, I have to ask you several questions. Oh, now you're giving me a mental evaluation? No, it's only the alien's fault, affecting me with the mumble-jumble mime manipulation that everyone has some object for a head. Like you, you have a stapler head. Hey, judge. Give me back my tinfoil hat or I'll bite you. It's only that's protecting me from the psychic waves. Uh, as you can see, Judge, uh, he's not competent to defend himself in co- Shut up! You suited men. Don't know what I'm going through. S sir I'm, I'm trying to help you. Please, remain quiet. Mr. Moss, do you know why you're here? Self-defense! Now let me out of these handcuffs. I'm afraid I cannot. Your records say you've been in and out of juvenile detention in county jail almost on a weekly basis. For a concerningly large amount of legal violations such as disturbing the public peace, petty theft, breaking and entry, possession of narcotics, vandalism, disorderly conduct, public indecency, just to name a few. You've practically used our legal code's restriction as a to-do list. So? So, according to the testimonies of everyone that is present, including victims and police, that wasn't self-defense you committed in the park. You have been convicted of assault in possession of a non-lethal weapon. The prison system has never worked for you. Manson Alexander Moss. You are hereby found not guilty by reasons of insanity. Sweet! You'll be institutionalized in Clark County Psychiatric Ward for mental rehabilitation. That is all. And that is what the transcript says, Mr. Moss. Ah, we finally get uh, our first actual vision here of uh, the inanimate object head people. Oh, that explains why I'm here now. I remember it as if it was yesterday. That's because it was yesterday. It was too much of a blur for me to confirm. All I remember was yelling at the park. Yelling at a scale and a stapler-headed man. And even more yelling as I woke up. How was I supposed to react to these monsters in front of me? Ah! Ah, what the hell, what the hell, what the hell? 
Miss Priscilla, come in here. There's no mouth on him. He was speaking. Got no mouth, but he must scream. Oh, ho, ho. any more movement in this may sting a bit. Why, why, why is the Neo now going to like a shape of a heart? So if he continues to lash out and we lock him in temporary isolation? Yeah, you could put it more politely, but yes, we've already received the records about his mental state. Bill's voice was thick with a foreign accent. Oh, you want me to do a foreign accent? Those usually go so well. It was tough to make out some words, but not as much as the raspy, singing song voice of Syringe. Do I really have to deal with him? For the last time, yes, it's your job, is it not? I have over 200 people under paperwork to manage, so now I have 201? Oh, it's been a complete waste of my day so far. Now I want none of it. Look at them talk in front of me. As if I'm some wild animal. I'm not. An annoyance I loudly clear my throat. All right. Pardon my rude behavior. Bill put down the large sack of papers and straightened his tie. How about a proper introduction now that we've all calmed down? Right. Calm down. My heart was still pounding in my chest from this surreal scenario. Standing up. Pill stuck out his hand in a hopeful attempt to lighten the stiff mood. I returned only a frown. My name is Dr. Antonio Acevedo. Oh yeah, I don't think that was the right accent I gave you then. <laughs> think that might be more of a Spanish type of accent. My name is Dr. Antonio Acevedo, and I'm here to help you. Help. He eagerly gestured towards the syringe who was beginning to file her nails. And the very important woman right next to me is the head nurse of this establishment, Priscilla Harbinger. Yo. You are currently residing in the town of Clark County, New York, specifically its renowned psychiatric hospital. Though many hospitals have a mental health section, this complex here is only for patients with conditions such as psychotic or personality disorders. How many times have I told people recently I'm not a loony? The judge should be thrown in here, not me. Mr. Moss. You're not a loony. There's no reason for you to use such words. What would you call me? Someone in need of guidance and assistance. You have been sent here on court orders for mental rehabilitation. And we're going to spend a delightful time together, singing in a circle, knitting like grandmas, and of course, talking all about our problems. Behave. But was I wrong? The doctor crossed his arms and shook his head, his wrapper crinkling in lieu of a frowning face. God, that's creepy. Indeed you were. There's many different types of therapy. In order for our progress to occur, Mr. Moss, I will be your psychiatric and therapist for these next few weeks. Months or however long it will take. We'll be working together. Now a personal psychiatrist? The ones that force feed you pills to control your mind? Oh, any trust that he could have gained from me was immediately thrown out the window. My hands balled into a fist again. The doctor scribbled something in his clipboard before looking back at me. Is everything else okay? Do I have something... Non-human for a head, as the transcript says? Object heads, you refer to them as. Now ask me to answer. What does he think? Wanted to get friendly with me after how he acted earlier. But the threat of another sedative stabbing me was the motivation to be somewhat cooperative. Yeah, you do, you pill bottle. Doctor's shoulders shook up and down in amusement. And of course, his top wrap removed the same. <laughs> Again, he hastily scribbled. Oh my, oh my, that's quite interesting. We'll start our sessions in a couple of days. You'll have to go to group therapy, as Miss Priscilla was mentioning before. But my door is always open if you need someone to talk to. I'll send a nurse to explain the details later. Well, why should I go to therapy, though? I, I can take care of myself on my own, so let me leave. Due to your unpredictability and temper, you're classified as a danger to society, so I would say yes, you, you have to. Oh, I didn't mean it in such a negative way. Don't give me that glare, Mr. Moss. Ahem, I meant that once you have been observed to be improving and self-sufficient, you may receive my signature to leave. But during your time here, you'll have to obey all of the staff. I have no doubts that you'll be just fine. I've helped many patients here, so there's nothing to fret about. Anything else you would like to say? My ass hurts. Uh, yes, this hospital staff is equally apologetic, but you refuse to put that... Put on the bat so the police had no choice but to use their bullets. Uh, the sensation may be uncomfortable, but should go away in several days. Let me know if the pain otherwise persists. I'm a doctor for your mental health, and I know how to take care of every patient who walks into my office. I'll be right by your side every step of the way. I see great hope in you, Mr. Moss. I just know it. All three of us stepped outside the bedroom. The doctor walked away 
walked away from us, cheerfully humming and waving goodbye. Despite our impromptu meeting, he was awfully kind. Not that bad. Maybe. Just maybe. I still don't trust this man that suddenly appeared in my life with a weird-ass head telling me I'm locked up because I'm sick in the mind. Stupid doctors tell me what to do. That's why I hated them. Priscilla pointed her thumb in the opposite direction with a dramatic flare, interrupting my grumbling. What do you got there, Priscilla? This way, hon. You don't have all day. It's tour time, and you're stuck with me. I had nurse and her attitude wasn't much better. Priscilla's high heels resounded off the linoleum floors, forced me to rapidly shuffle my Velcro shoes to keep up. Wait, Velcro? I remember before passing out that I was wearing sneakers. Looking down, my original prison uniform was replaced by an itchy sweater and an ill-fitting sweatpants. Indeed, soft white shoes were fast secured to my feet. Fantastic. So I wonder how my shirt changed and who changed me. Passed by some signs on the wall. First sign had nothing but a disgustingly long list of red X's with pictures by the side. No belts, no lace shoes, no ripped clothing. The others hardly caught my eye, but there was undoubtedly more rules. Ish, this place really is a prison. Continued to squint all the papers until I heard Priscilla's heels impatiently tapping. Ran to catch up with. Yep, those were the rules. Having fun so far? Absolutely kick ass. <laughs> it was quite a surprise you gave us this morning, but I like your spawn con. Don't cause any more trouble and you'll be just fine. Or I'll use my trusty needle. Okay. Do it. Mm -hmm. Do it. Like Priscilla, Dr. Acevedo, and the chaos that happened the other day, everyone in front of me had an inanimate object for her head. Some had commonplace heads such as TVs, while others had more peculiar ones like candles or darts. I used them to watch TV? Or possibly smoke a cigarette-headed person? Possibilities were tempting. Not to mention I could really use some tobacco at the moment. And? All of a sudden, a door that we passed by slowly creaked open. A muscular man, built like a professional football player with clothes practically bursting at the seams, poked his head out the crack. He gripped the door frame, completely towering over me. Never seen anyone so tall in my life before. He had an amusing object at the top of his neck. A red and white drawing board with those two knobs attached to it. The board was blank, but the top part was wrapped in some emotion I couldn't read. He upset with me? Enraged? The giant and I stared at each other, waiting to see who would break gaze or speak first. I didn't have that kind of patience, though. His intimidating presence made my voice sound more like a squeak of a mouse. Uh -huh. Hey, buff guy, hi, hi, what do you want? The door could have broken my nose with how quickly he slammed it shut. Before I could register what happened, Priscilla gestured the plague hanging next to the door. That's Jones Carvey. He's a patient you'll be going through group therapy with, alongside with everyone in his hallway. He's been staying here for a couple of years, so don't mind him, he's harmless. Years? That's right, years. What was the age he was admitted here again? 18, 19? Oh, it's all allowed, you know. Not for the rest of their lives, but if there's room in a proper reason. Why so long? Is he forcibly hospitalized like this? I never managed his case and it's been a while since I've cared to ask. You can always ask the other patients or Jones himself if he'll ever open the door again. By the way, since I took a long, long look at your file with Antonio before you were dropped here, what kind of head do you see me as? The range. Oh, cool. Does this mean I can impale people I run into them? How uh, should I know? Is she making fun of me? I should get hired here in the first place. Scurrying past us was a man in nurse scrubs and for his head, scissors equally as sharp as Priscilla's needle. Ah, here's someone you can bug. Oh, God. Actually kind of terrifying. He skidded to a stop holding a large stack of papers. Priscilla eagerly skipped closer. Oh, hello there. I haven't seen you before, and hello, Miss Priscilla. Are you giving the new patient a tour? Mm-hmm. The head nurse put her right hand on her hips while again pointing to the man in front of us. This is Kent Goldstein. Run to him if you need anything. Can do. I'll make sure your stay here is as welcoming as possible. How so? We can throw a welcome party, or I can introduce you to the other patients here. Or anything, really. That's what I'm known for. Not to mention he's a master at massaging shoulders and feet. Hey! Now that is an adorable, uh, scissor-headed man. I smiled now, the first since I've been here. I help run some of the group therapy sessions, so if our schedules coincide, I'll gladly sit next to you if you like. Let me guess, it's as bad as Priscilla said? Not at all. It's a fantastic way for us to bond together. 
We're right next to one currently in session. Take a look. I approached the door windows that Ken was pointing to. Several grumpy members were sitting in a circle in silence, greatly boasting my enthusiasm about the exit therapy I'll have to attend. See, I can't wait for you to join. Yeah, sure. Oh, goody. Mr. Goldstein, a patient is looking for you. Ah, then, I know who it is. Toodles, I have some more errands to run if you would like to excuse me. And wave us goodbye already back to scurrying. While Priscilla dragged me by my sweater's collar. Manson, we know you can hear us. By now, my headache was completely unbearable. Should have known something was up as soon as I was awake. All I want is to lay down and not think about who's trying to talk in my brain. Like, seriously, stop ignoring us. This is important, we swear. Hey, um, Priscilla, I'm, I'm ready to go back to my room. I'll, I'll figure out the rest on my own. As you wish. You'll need the rest uh, for your busy day tomorrow. Now, how busy are we talking? Several hours of paperwork you'll have to file, hon. I thought you said the war took care of it. They took care of things like sewings and hospital bills from the victim. You caused plenty of property damage, too. You'll have to fill in who you are in your treatment plan with Antonio here. Believe me, I don't want to do the filing work either. I was aware. Clear as day. Bed here I... I told you I'll say hello first. But I was the one talking to him the longest. I'm more special. But I'm the cutest. You like me best. Um, excuse me, I'm cuter. Come on, you two. Didn't we all agree on being the leader? It's my responsibility. Three women I have never seen in my life were arguing in my room. A lamp, a mirror, and a chair were attached to each other necks. The hell? Priscilla know about this? Who are you and what are you doing in my room? Woo! Oh, he's here, he's here. Uh, ah! Oh, I should have run out of the room while I still had the chance. In the blink of an eye, I was jumped upon by furniture heads, each having their own way of poking and prodding my sides. Oh, it's so good to finally see you. We've been trying to get in contact with you for the longest time. How did your day go? Did you tell Acevedo to stick it where it hurts yet? Don't forget about me. Hey, stop yanking on my hair. But it's so soft. Tell me your secrets. <laughs> Sexy, too. I just want to rub my hands all over your... Out! I said get out! How dare you treat your friends like that? Hold the mother freaking phone. Friends? Yeah. Why else would we be here? Oh, no, no, no. This can't be happening. I don't have any friends, especially those who don't understand what personal space is. The trio took a step back. I'm like, not like that, you dumbasses. I meant outside the... Never answer me. Why are you in my room? How do you know me? Aw, oh, Manson's being mean. Don't worry. He'll come to his senses soon. You've been our friend for the longest time, ever since we could remember. How do you not know? So meeting you here is a long-awaited reunion. Aren't you glad? I don't care, I have a headache, and all you three are doing is pissing me off further. Are you guys gonna leave? On your own? I'm gonna have to remove you. We refuse. We spent all this time preparing to welcome you. This is how you treat us? I want to make our time worthwhile. Please, let us stay a little longer. How about a minute? Half a minute? Of course it is. You wouldn't dare. I'm not afraid to hit a woman either. It's three on one, and I'll hit you <laughs> twice as hard. Fighting is in my blood. Me too. Oh, my nails dug into my hands. Aww. Must you really engage with him in this manner? We're better than this. He insulted our hospitality. Do you think I could let him get away with that? Manson, listen to me. You don't want to do this. As soon as Mirror laid her hands on my shoulder, I grabbed it, threw her back. With how light Mirror was, she practically went flying. Lamp and chair stared. <sighs> so be it. Ugh! back banged against the bed frame in retaliation a flailing scratch of mine sent lamp onto the floor gripping her head one down two to go kicking lamp out of the way i grabbed chair into a headlock uh, no fair let me go i chuckle from her feeble efforts if only she had a mouth to bite me to escape this position but not so tough now are you mirror had stuck her foot under mine without me noticing me. you sneaky it tripped both chair and i driving us towards the window chair who was still stuck in my grasp very chill like Partially slammed through the window, panes and bars. Uh oh, the noises of our scuffle should have attracted at least some nurses' security attention by now. But at this point, I hardly cared. Headache? What headache? I'm feeling so alive. I'll fight everyone that comes my way. Already, chair was down for the count. I popped my fist up. This fight was too easy. Really? That's all you got? Oh, you were acting so tough earlier. Two down, one to go. 
driving my foot into her face quickly. Took care of her. She won't bother me, not to mention Stan for a while. I knew this wasn't a good idea. This is why I should have been leader. I triumphantly stood over the three groaning women, practically craning my ears for the sweet, sweet sound of defeat. How's that for a welcome gift? I told I wasn't afraid to hit you. Uh, what is my eye? Oh, do I hear round two? She turned to face me, and in that moment, my blood froze. Inside Lamp's claw-like tear was a void. No blood, no brains. Nothing organic to be found. What? All present in the room let out a chorus of scream. What the fuck? Why are my arms on the floor? I'm human! Oh my god, my face is everywhere! It, it doesn't even hurt. I'm human, I'm human! No, no, you're not. What was left of my already dwindling rationality and sanity flew out the window. I collapsed to the floor, using every cell in me to process what in the living, ever living hell was going on. When did people start breaking apart like literal furniture? I mean, I thought it was strange how weak and light they were, but this? This, this is impossible unless... Were you the voices I heard from the hallway before? <laughs> I glanced at Cher's splintered arm, and the wood missing from her head, then back at the beat-up chairless desk in my room. That was the only explanation. The women in front of me weren't real. This is all a figment of my imagination. I had just had a fist fight with three pieces of my own furniture. But that just opened up a new can of worms. If my furniture was talking to me, does this mean that Dr. Acevedo and the rest of the people I met today weren't real? They were actually pill bottles and guns I spent an entire day talking with? Uh, how did I get in here, then? Was it by an inanimate or a human? What about that judge? Was he responsible? No, no, he couldn't have been inanimate. Or maybe it was the aliens again. What if they were made up, too? Someone, anyone. Please explain, answer me. How much this is real? <laughs> One could deny they were gone. Being only broken wood and glass littering the ground. Shakily gripped the bed frame to pull myself up. Get a hell like yourself, Manson. They're gone. All they wanted to do was mess with your mind. Next to my foot was a large shard, large enough to see my reflection. It's, it's an object headed Manson looking straight at me. Crushed it. <laughs> now a nervous pillow. Head was staring at me from the bed. Uh, I didn't see anything. Uh, hello, Manson. Three down, one to go. Three down, one to go. I tackled her, bringing her body dangerously close to the window's ledge. The three stories above the ground, and the other thing below is pavement. Pillow gripped the window frame for her life to maintain her balance. Not for long, she would. Let's talk it out, Manson. Listen to me, I'm human, and it's wrong to commit murder. I don't believe you. Who are you? Dorothy, I'm Dorothy Smitty, roommate. Have mercy. What did anyone tell me sooner? It was recent. They just changed the, the plaque outside. Read it if you doubt me. So what are you here for, then? Depression and delusions. I know how you feel, man, since so don't do this. I'm real, just like you. I gritted my teeth. Her soft and frightened voice was getting to me. I felt my grip on her loosening slightly. She definitely wasn't acting like those furniture women. But it could be a trap. Well, this real bull isn't as cut as dry anymore, is it? I have more questions, so keep answering. If you're telling the truth, why is there only one bet? A uh, mistake by the ward? Oh, how convenient. There's only one bed. Why are we roommates if there's only one bed? And with a woman? And you are my pillow, so you're f a fake too? Not at all. L look, look, there's a pillow on the bed already. It was already a mistake by the ward. You already know this place is in poor condition and Priscilla is a lousy manager, so we're accidentally roomed. They're going to fix it soon. I'm your ally here. Who else would believe you? Well, apparently only no mercy is the only option we got here in this demo, so... Bye-bye, Dorothy! My hand shoved her forward. A couple of seconds later, a loud splat was heard in the ground. Sorry. Not good enough for me. That's been Object Ward. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. As I've mentioned, um... Absolutely freaking insane. That's the reason why it caught my attention when I was... Skimming through games on Steam. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. All the information for this will be down below. Apparently said it to come out this year. Hopefully that is indeed the case, because this would be a wild ride for sure. I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>